Um, next, take a, take a look at stockpiles. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this a little bit later, but stockpiles uh, gives you uh, a list of all missiles and any components that you have stock stored on the planet. Um, this is useful for scrapping and disassembling. So scrapping will return about 30, 35% of the resources used to make whatever the thing is. And disassemble will delete that component, but any technology used to create that component or design that component that you do not already have, you will get a little bit of research, free research points for it. So if you have an engine that has better fuel economy tech than you do, and disassembling it will give you research points towards the next level of fuel economy tech. If you have a laser that, and you have like no experience with lasers and you just completely ignore laser and you find a high-end laser, then you will get research points towards every type of technology used to create that laser. Um, unless Steve has changed the ratios, it takes on average about 40 components, uh, to fully research the techno the next level of technology that, that was used in that component. Although there is a little bit of difference. Like if the level was, is like two or three or more than just the next tech level, I believe you get more research points towards that tech. So you might get, so it might take more or less or significantly less uh, components to actually fully research out a technology. But if you like start farming precursors, which are probably higher tech than you are, at least at the beginning, uh, if you start farming precursors or a high tech empire, it will let you more rapidly catch up to them and give you free research points. So. Uh, you should always disassemble a component, check the event log, see if you get something good out of it. And if you get nothing out of it, then just scrap it. Unless you plan on using it in your own ships, which you can definitely do. We'll talk about that once we get to um, ship design. Okay, so the terraforming screen. Now, I'm not going to go into terraforming itself because that is an episode in and of itself. Um, that will come to later. So I'm just going to cover the actual UI itself and what you're actually looking at. So up here is a drop down of what gas you're working with. Now, all the terraformers on a planet work together, whether they're orbital or ground based, and you select the gas they're going to be adding or removing from this drop down. Once you have your gas selected, you are either going to tick this if you want to add, in other words, go up. Uh, to a target that's higher than what's already in there. And you're going to untick it if you want to remove it. Um, ideally, the code should be automatically figuring out whether it needs to go higher or lower, but until that's done, um, you have to make sure that this is ticked if you want to increase it or unticked if you decrease it. And in here is where you put in what the target actually is. Now, everything is done in atmospheres, Percentages are automatically calculated. So you remember that this is based on the atmospheres, not the percentages. Over here, we have the current status of the pl planet that you're on. Uh, you can see here that Mars is different from Earth. So this is the current status. Uh, we have here the list of what gases are currently comprising the atmosphere. So for Earth, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon at 79, 20, and 1%. Uh, ratios. The other smaller gases are not shown because they are at tiny fractions of percentages and don't really play too much of a role. Uh, so we can see here because atmosphere is one, the percentages are all identical to their atmospheres at 0 0.79, 0 0.2 and 0 0.01. So this is what you're looking at when you're adding or removing this. So down here, we have the atmospheric pressure totals and greenhouse factors. So atmospheric pressure is one. Um, that's the total pressure of the planet body. You can see that on Mars, it's 0 0.01. So it's 1% atmospheric pressure in total. Greenhouse gas pressure is the pressure effect of any greenhouse gases that you have on the body. Uh, greenhouse gases are things like... Uh, Estusium and carbon dioxide and methane. 
so these are the positive greenhouse gas pressure and this one here is the anti-greenhouse gas pressure the only one i'm aware of is uh Phrygisium. i'm not aware that any others actually act as anti-greenhouse gases so these offset and counteract these uh, the greenhouse factor is the total greenhouse factor of all gases on the body, as well as the atmosphere. Now, keep in mind, the atmosphere itself is considered uh, a greenhouse factor. So, this summarizes all of these. Uh, the albedo factor is the reflectivity of the body itself. So, if you have uh, ice on the planet, then the albedo factor is going to be high. If you do not have ice, then the albedo factor is going to be potentially low. Uh, I believe size of the body also determines the albedo factor, but this won't really change very much um, except when you're freezing or thawing the surface. Uh, down here we have the base temperature. The base temperature is determined entirely by its distance from the sun and the sun itself. The surface temperature, temperature is the modified base temperature by the greenhouse and albedo factors. So you can see that the base temperature is minus 18 for Earth. So if we had no atmosphere whatsoever, the temperature would be minus 18. But because we have a little bit of greenhouse factor, it's actually 14 degrees. Uh, so the base temperature is not really important. The surface temperature is the one you're going to be looking at. Um, this is the one that you need to get within your race's uh, tolerance. Uh, base temperature and surface temperature down here is in Kelvin. So if you want absolute numbers. Hydrographic extent is how much of the planet is covered in water or ice if it's frozen solid uh this needs to be within 20 and i think 80 degree, 80 um we'll talk about more uh, we'll talk more about the ranges that they have to actually be in once we talk about terraforming in the terraforming episode but this is where you see your hydrographic extent uh, radiation and atmospheric dust level these are caused by weapon strikes um radiation is caused by missiles and nukes atmospheric is caused by missiles and all other weapons as well uh, body diameter uh, body diameter is down here and the terraform rate versus earth is here so if you're bigger than earth it's going to, going to terraform slower if you're smaller than earth it's going to terraform faster earth obviously terraforms at exactly the same rate as earth but if you have a look at mars it's a little bit smaller so it's gonna ter terraform about 3.52 times faster than earth will up here in the top right, we have the actual colony cost factors. So if you remember in the summary, the colony cost is over here. This is the final colony cost and Mars is 2.213. This down here is where the breakdown is of why it's that particular amount. You can also see it up in the system view, but in here you get the total breakdown. So this is the total colony cost. This is what ends up going over here. Uh, these are the actual factors. So this is the temperature factor. This is the atmosphere factor, whether it's breathable or not. This is any uh, toxic gases. This one here is the from the pressure itself. So if you're over pressure. And this one is if you have no water supply. Uh, acceptable gravity is a yes or a no if the gravity is within your acceptable limits. And atmosphere retention, well, certain bodies are just so small that they just are incapable of holding an atmosphere. So this is where you can see whether that is going to be an issue. If it's not capable of retaining an atmosphere, you're going to need permanent terraforming um, on the planet. Uh, you can see here on Mars that the temperature factor is 2.12, breathable is 2 because it, there's not enough atmosphere, the dangerous atmosphere is 2 because carbon dioxide is a, the majority percent, uh, there is water but atmospheric pressure is not a problem. Well, the water is actually low which is why the cost is 1 but we'll talk about that in the terraforming episode. And down here is a summary of your population species, just in case you don't know it off the top of your head. So you can see in the same window exactly what you need to set these factors to. So in the episode about terraforming, I'm going to talk about how to get these numbers to match these and what you need to do to get a planet terraformed. But this is where you can see all these factors and where you control your terraformers.